Can you beat every game mode in BT6 with only one tower? That is every base game mode on a map ranging from easy, deflation, apocalypse, half cash and chimps? Possibly. Stick around to find out. Starting off, easy mode. It kind of goes without saying that if one tower could be at a harder game mode, like chimps, then we can use that same tower for almost any other game mode. So that's why to spice it up, I am going to be challenging myself to see how many different towers I can use to solo each game mode. To my knowledge, it's currently impossible to get a unique one tower completion on every game mode. There are simply too many game modes and not enough good solo towers to make that work, but we'll see how many we can come up with. Thankfully, the easy game modes allow us to experiment slash deviate quite a bit. So for example, for this easy map, I'm going to choose a Century Expert. You can choose pretty much any tower that can pop any type of balloon. Minus Camel, because you have enough starting lives on easy mode to tank pretty much every camel in the game. All you need now is to be able to also beat a lower reduced HP Moab. And as you can see very clearly, Century Expert mows it down. And that is easy mode complete. Primary only should also be fairly trivial because uh, there is a tower called the Boomerang. If I go for the 042, that pops lead. That has an ability that I could use to beat a massive amount of balloons and the mob as well. No camel, but again, that does not matter at all. And yes, for the purposes of finding our answer here, we are going to be streamlining and playing every single game mode on logs. Unless there is another map out there that somehow allows us to expand the amount of unique solutions. Then I might stray away from that rule, so I have to use the ability just to end off 39 just in case. But that's no problem because it lasts into round 40, and there it is. Primary only done with one tower. Deflation's where things start getting interesting because we can use towers that you normally can't save up for because we start instantly 30k. So I think a tower that would only be able to solo this game mode and this game mode only would be the 024 Comanche Defense. It still leaves us with a lot of money left over, over 8,000, but the mini Comanches are very strong and we can use the long length of the map to manipulate when they spawn so that we get one out for every single round. This tower can't normally be used to solo any other game mode because obviously its stepping stones are very, very, very bad. Mob Shove doesn't do any damage at all, nor does an 022 heli. What can I say? Logs is too easy. The map is so long too that we really only need the second plane spawn to beat every round here, even though if you got far enough into the track, you could spawn three of them. And with the conclusion of round 60, that is that. Every easy game mode completed with one tower. Three unique towers. Medium mode is where our options start to dwindle, because we now have to get a tower that also pops camo, as well as every other type of balloon. Not only that, but also has to handle multiple mobs and ceramics, and for that, I think the Spike Factory would be a decent choice. Precisely, 420 Spike Mines. This is the perfect tower to defend mid-game rounds because of its fairly high pierce, but not absurd enough that we could use it to solo hard mode. So that makes it perfect for the situation on top of very, very easy stepping stone upgrades, so Spike Balls handles the 30s as well. And now not only with Spike Mines do we have even higher pierce, but we also have explosions for even more pierce on top of that high pierce. Of all rounds on medium mode, round 55 might be the scariest because of the instant ramps coming out, but again with that napalm explosion, doesn't even get close. And with that, that is four game modes, uh, four unique towers. Next up, we've got military only, and the tower of choice I have here is a sniper. What sniper can possibly defend all 60 rounds? Well, that would be the middle path elite sniper. You'd be surprised to see how well this actually defends. For this, we would need a 250 just to be able to pop the early lead balloons. Uh, so far, this is definitely the weakest early game tower of the bunch because uh, a 120 just does not do a lot at all. So we're going to have to uh, hit a bit of a road spike there, but that's fine. Bouncy below now. Also, in the name agreed, we don't buy 230 so that we can buy supply, supply drop faster as well as... Uh, Stalling out the rounds a little bit longer so that we end up getting more supply drop abilities equaling an earlier Elite Sniper. This does drop us all the way down to 71 lives, but this will be fine. As expected, the mob damage is not very pretty, only 7 damage per shot at a very slow firing rate, but the power of logs allow us to, allows us to pop it just in time. And with Elite Sniper, we're able to shoot faster, and with the incredible speed of the Elite Sniper, we can now pop Moabs well before the halfway mark. Meaning even the hardest of mob rounds shouldn't be a problem, right? Like 58s, bunch of spaced moabs, uh, nope. We're all clear. Same with the BFB here. 5 for 5. 
And now for the next game mode, Apocalypse, I want to pull out another military tower. And this military tower would be the boat. Precisely the 042 Monkey Pirate. If we get this up, then it pops every type of balloon. Also does incredibly good mob damage and just group damage in general, which is perfect for Apocalypse, where there are just lots of endless group rounds. Don't forget also to set the boat on last so that it gets 10% extra attack speed with the Monkey Knowledge. Even the cannon ship is no slouch of a tower, so it should allow us to easily save up for the monkey part while also annihilating any hard RNG pop-ups run that could come our way. But so far, nothing is even standing a chance, not even the fortified regrow leads, nor the rainbows. And just like that, we've got monkey pirate. And now we just wait for the first mob round. Even though it has good mob damage, we might as well use that hook whenever possible. And now, very soon, Apocalypse will change to uh, constant mob rounds. Yup, here it is on round 45. Here's how the Monkey Power deals with it. Not breaking a sweat at all. From here, it should just be one more minute before the game mode is done. We even got Fortifieds in the house, but we don't even need the Monkey Power hook in to beat that, either. That is how strong it is, folks. Round 56. We can also buy Power Lord, but I think we might save that for another time, given how good this tower is looking. And the end. 6 for 6. For the last medium game mode, this might be the weirdest choice so far, because I think I've ran out of all the decently good options. And I've done a lot of scouring and testing, and I think one tower that actually could work is the boat again. But this time, not the middle path. Instead, believe it or not, we are going to go for the bottom path. Yes, the money-making tower. The Merchant Man into Trade Empire. Which might come as a shock to you, but you'd be surprised again about how good it actually is, damage-wise. Once again, in order to maximize money, we won't buy a hot shot until we absolutely need to. That allows us to afford the flavor trades before getting it, and so we can get a tra Trade Empire as early as possible. Now, I'm not sure if Reverse Mode actually makes it better or worse for our Trade Empire, but if it somehow ends up being that normal, non-Reverse Mode is better for the boat, then we might have to swap the towers that we use for those game modes, but... Yeah, as you see so far, that is actually not very good at all for one Moab. But that's probably because we had only flavor trades. Now we got Tyrannic Power, so that gets plus damage. Then surrounds like 49 are a very good test. Riga Rainbows, no problem. Ceramics, no problem. And now for Moabs, which we want to leave on last. Last until we get to the Ceramics, that is, when that is when we want to put it back in first. Close, but does the job. A bigger reason why reverse might be harder or easier is, of course, the rounds being reversed too. 55 here is really, really tricky, and I am pretty sure I'm going to have to leak lives here. Down to 104, but if I stay at 104, I will take it. Okay, a couple more lives lost there. That's not a big deal. Only 44 lives now for the end of 58. This'll be fine. Oh god, Rigo Ceram's coming at the start here. It might be impossible. Yikes. Okay, we got really lucky this round. No regos whatsoever. If we can get no lives lost in this round, that's great. Here we go. The final round. Can a trade empire solo a BFB? Here come the onslaught of ceramics. That is not good. Again, perhaps? Nope. Oh, hang on. This round might be a little better. Somehow, I left one mob alive, so that's less stuff we have to deal with for this part here. Come on. It's so close. If only I saved a couple more lives. I think in order to win, we have to manipulate how many mobs pop right here. So only three of four is good. So watch this. Watch this. Oh. Oh. Come on. 17. It's so close. I think at this point, the best course of action after a billion retries is simply to uh, restart. And uh, just maximize life saving on all the rounds I lost lives on. As you can see, much, much, much healthier coming into the final rounds. 122 lives coming into 60. I'd say pretty much a difference between life and death, right? Even with the extra lives, it's still really hard to pull off the one mobile life trick. I think this does it though. Come on, 30, 28. Please, please. Yes. <laughs> That was hard, but we successfully pulled off seven unique towers in seven game modes. Now with hard mode, here's where the tower selection gets even thinner, because now we gotta deal with ZMGs, BFBs, uh, round 63 and 76. And after scouring through all the options again for towers, uh, there's only a few that come to mind. One of which will require me to tank round 3 and round 4 entirely, 
in order to afford, well, the Heli Pilots. Can't be bottom path because I said the Comanche doesn't work on any other game mode other than Inflation. Can't be middle path because Downdrafts isn't damaged. So yes, it is going to be a top path Heli. The only way the Solar Tower can work is if Razor Rotors can save up $20,000 for the Apache. And I believe it is possible. Razor Rotors got several buffs in recent updates that made it a lot, lot stronger. Still not a great upgrade by any means, but it probably isn't completely useless anymore. At least for the purposes of this challenge here. So with the Razor Rotors, we would need to defend approximately 47 rounds in order to afford the Apache. But here you can see, even for a Moab, no big deal. Round 43 is one of the scary rounds leading up to 47, and even with Pursuit, not even my own micro, it is holding its own. And now for 47, do I even need to micro this round? Nope. Apache Dark Ship is ours. One more problem with the Apache though is that you can't actually beat 76 because it's a massive Rico ceramic round and the missiles can't pop back one, so I would need to be able to afford Apache Prime in time for that round. But luckily, the math does add up there as well. So despite this being a harder game mode than all the other ones so far, this might just be one of the easier ones. Just in case you're not convinced that this doesn't beat 76, here you go, here is what happens. I would be pleasantly shocked if it works. Actually, I swear it was always to my knowledge that Apache Darcher would die to 76, but maybe the Razor Rotor buff was enough to make the difference. Turn the tides over. In that case, if we can actually beat hard mode with only Apache Dart Ship, we can save a Prime for another map. All we gotta do now is not create a rear farm on round 79, but if it doesn't create a rear farm in 76, I don't think it would this round either, right? Especially not with Pursuit. Not only can Apache beat all 80 rounds, but... It doesn't require any micro whatsoever. Well, color me shocked because that is mighty impressive. Unfortunately, Magic Monkey's only mode is the mode where we start. We have to start using heroes because uh, there are no good Magic Monkeys that I can solo with because all of them have some sort of weakness with the Wizard being purple, Ninja being lead, Druid being camo, and Alchemist too. And Super Monkey just simply being unaffordable. To fit the theme of Magic Monkeys only, we're also going to do Corvus, which... Uh, is pretty much guaranteed to solo on its own if you've seen anything about how good Corvus is. Corvus is so good that we don't even have to optimize very well because uh, this is a terrible placement. We're not even nourishing properly. He does just require a little bit of help, however, in the form of using Vision for any camo rounds. And of course, using Spear for any leads on top of Soul Harvest. Remind me once again to take a nice long break from Corvus after this because even though it's only 80 rounds, it's still a, a hell of a lot of micro that I gotta do every single round here. Bit of a sloppy run, as you can see by the not full lives, but does the job. And then this round, just do this and this, and we are good. And at long last, we have reached the end. Magic Monkeys only? Complete with one tower only. The next game mode, Double HP Mob, should give us a little bit of a reprieve, because uh, we're not going to use a hero. I think we could get away with the Heli Pilot again. And this time, upgrade to the Apache Prime, because now with double HP Moabs, that's the only way we're going to be able to tackle them. That, and of course, we already used the Apache Dark Ship. The only question is, can we beat a double HP Moab with only the Razor Rotors? The answer is... Yes, and by quite a good amount. So there is Apache Dark Ship, and uh, mark this as pretty much a free a freebie. The F Moabs do be making me sweat, though. Getting to the last bend. Perhaps this isn't the freest save up to uh, Apache Prime than I thought. That's how you know it's serious business when we have to pull the Heli Micro. So now we're going to have to target solely the F Moabs, and then we can deal with the normal mobs later. Something like that is good. And that'll do, that'll do. Luckily, that is the only round that is a problem, because we can afford Apache Prime right now, and the rest of the game is easy. Make that another mode with a unique Terror Beaten. And now this is arguably the hardest game mode to solo with, half cash. Is this mode even possible with a single tower? Well, here's what I found. First off, the cheapest hero. We have still yet to use Sada, but unfortunately, even on half cash, we cannot afford her by tanking all the balloons here, because we will lose on round 5, just $50 shy of getting Sada down. But now let me go back to what I said at the very start, in that maybe there's a map that I need to pull an exception for that's not logs that could actually work because uh, there is a scrapyard crusher that can actually pop loons and thus I think it allows us to tank round five entirely. So if we wait for the crusher here, we should end up with enough lives to drop Sada down. 
But even if you drop Sodadam, does this even work? Because obviously, Scrapyard is a much tougher map than Log, especially with Sada on this spot. This is the spot that I think she's best in. And after playing it through with Sada, um, here's the conclusion. I don't think it's possible. Even though you're given a good amount of cash to spend with on Sada, she just isn't strong enough on this map and not a high enough level to uh, have the pierce. We can see this very simply on round 79, for example, where at that point, with the half cash, you would only be able to get up to level 16 Sada, but you see just how weak she is at defending Rigor of Rainbows, that she can't possibly keep up, and she can't possibly get enough abilities to uh, get enough sword charges to beat all the Rigor Rainbows this round, so that is unfortunately not a viable option for us either. And that brings us back to the boat, to where I think the Parvard Lord could do it. You saw how good it is in Apoplip, so there is a chance that we can somehow scrounge up the $58,000 for it. That does unfortunately require us to beat some very, very, very nasty rounds, however. The hardest of which is going to come in right now, in fact. Round 63. We have full lives coming into it. I'm going to have to do whatever it takes to land every single bomb on the uh, giant dense wave. So I guess strong. And then last for, again, attack speed. Back to first. The biggest problem is that they're so dense that there's so many extra black balloons left over. So uh, we're going to have to lose 20 lives on wave 1. Not a good start. Uh, how about for wave 2 here? No, that's way too many... Uh, Lacks and Zebras. This might be the sketchiest micro I'll have to do in my life, but here's to hoping. Um, back on last. Back on first now. How are we doing now? Any better? Nine lives. Yeah, I can't do this. Come on, wave two again. If I can tank that... I think what I'm noticing here is that... Notice how we just whiff those light balloons. Or right in between those light balloons on the first wave. So perhaps the real key here is the placement of the boat in order to uh, allow us to get the uh, explosions in the right places. Because right now, like, having that whiff is like a compound effect. Yeah. So by that, I mean maybe a little bit higher. So watch this. Mm, that's, a, that's a juicy amount of bombs that hit. And look at wave one now. Look how much faster we're beating it. Yup, there's like almost nothing left over and we barely have to leave shots on first. Very few, if any, in fact. And... Uh, now here's wave two, pretty much completely wiped off, minus a couple black loans. Now it wasn't that easy. And now we'll see for the end of 63 here, yep. That's gonna do it, folks, I think. But of course I bought and resold, which isn't allowed, so now I have to redo the whole run. And beat 63 again, but in this spot for the whole game. So from the top, every bomb has landed, very awesome. Looking solid, fellas. In fact, this time... I can even keep the road spike, I think. No lives lost. I'm not too worried about the rounds past 63 because this thing is a mob-killing machine. Just, of course, makes things so much easier when you can just eliminate the strongest threat. Okay, this round's pretty scary, though. 71, lots of moabs. If I beat this round, though, we can get the P-Lord. Come on. Come more balloons of this round. And there it is. Don't underestimate the middle path boat, fellas. It is wonderful. Half cash has been taken down. Alternate balloons rounds is going to require another alternate tower, or rather alternate hero. I think Sada can do it. Of course, she's been uh, nerfed heavily from the uh, one tower chimp stays with her, but surely she should still be able to handle 80 rounds, right? Even though it is a uh, much tougher 80 rounds than usual with ABR. I mean, Sada can pretty much do it all from the jump. Yes, that pun was intended. Just gotta make sure to save the uh, Leaping Sword for any of the lead rounds, uh, and uh, luckily Longs is long enough that we can uh, sometimes use two to get the leads. I am just a little bit concerned about the F-Mob on round 40, though, because uh, Sada does quite, take quite a lot of swipes to get her down, but I think I can get, get two of these in a round. Or oh, I guess the Balloon Bleed helps, too. Right. And because this isn't half cash anymore, we should be able to afford much more levels in the Sada. And thus, we shouldn't die to those uh, rounds that she died on in the half cash testing. ABR is making rounds that are usually hard, very hard for us, though. Round 53. I'm just gonna have to tank a little bit of that. Yeah, this ain't a freebie just yet. Gonna have to make sure my ability timing is on point so that I don't, you know, start a tough round with all of them on cooldown. That would be disastrous. Uh, 58 here is also another tough round. I think I'll just tank the lives lost here. 93. 85 should be okay. Sheesh, and now an FBFB on 60. Don't mind if I just store charge through it all. Uh, come on, sword charge now. Okay, just a couple of this left. This is doable, right? Two Moabs, one, and... Uh, I'll take that. 
I'm not gonna lie, I might have underestimated just how difficult ABR would be. Okay, this run, I think I will just sword charge the insides. 66 lives. Uh, this is gonna be close. But I'll take this if, if this survives, because uh, now I have sword charge up for 63, even though it's only 18. Luckily, every subsequent Sada level slowly gets easier. We'll get level 14 now, and then we'll have sword charge up again for uh, this insane giant clump of F, F Cerams. And then again, another sword charge to end off 66 here. Good. Getting level 15 has been really massive, not gonna lie. And now I think I can beat F-Mobs with ease. Not even having to use Sword Charge for the insides. It hasn't been easy so far whatsoever, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Level 17 is coming up soon too, which will greatly help. Okay, 76 is tricky due to the Pierce capping of Sword Charge. Trying to leave as many Pierce ramps up as possible. So that Sword Charge doesn't hit the Pierce, Pierce limit. That looks pretty clean. We'll use Leaping Sword to clear out some more ceramics. And is that a reasonable enough to deal with? So close. I probably could have used the lives from earlier. But okay, we're good. And now we got level 17, which you see is a huge power spike. Now we do we barely need any abilities at all. Do we now? Yup. Taking down giant clumps of balloons with ease. And ladies and gents, we did it. One tower alternate balloons rounds. To tackle Impoppable Mode, we're going to need another hero, and there's really only one hero that really works that we haven't used yet, and that would be Geraldo. Now to clarify, Geraldo's sub-towers are technically not counted as towers, so yes, we can use stuff like Shooty Turret to help him out. Otherwise, obviously, this would not be possible. And given that it was once possible to do one-tower chimps with Geraldo, it should absolutely be doable and Impoppable, even despite the increased prices and the nerfs that he's gotten since then. Okay, there's just one problem, and a pretty big problem. Lead balloons, and I can't... I can't get J Bottle of Jerry's Fire. Nor can I get the NFT on an early round, because the pop -up prices are insane. So I can never actually afford the Quincy action figure. Therefore, yes, the only way this is possible, it seems, is if we go once again to Scrapyard to see if the Crusher can take us over the edge. To do this is going to be pretty precise, though, because, you don't, again, you can only use the Crusher one time every while or so. So what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to have to do one of this and then do that. And we got all leads on 28. Now, I don't know if we can get them all on 30, but of course we'll see where the money's at in terms of affording Bottle of Jerry's Fire. And unfortunately, it's not good. We are 1.2k shorts. There's no way the Crusher can get all leads, right? Oh my god, this is going to be... A nightmare. Okay, plan. Have Creepy Idol knock back the first lead and then sell it. This makes the whole line of leads just a little bit lesser. And then what do we do? I'm not sure, but I'll knock back this lead. To get, well, a closer clump now, but I... I don't know. This is going to be one tough pattern to figure out. Alright, new run. I think what I have to do here is I need to beat this round without using any... Any creepy at all, so I think how you do it is something like that, but better. I need to time the glue so that the leads here get under the crush at the same time these three leads get under here. It'll take some pretty precise timing, though. Come on. Ugh. And... Ugh. 37th time's a charm. Now? I think we got it. Nice. Okay. Now we gotta work with this glue here, however, for round 30, although I think it's fine. So what I have to do this round is, uh, I have to glue the backside leads. I need to time it in a way so that these get under the crush at the same time these do. And did I do it right? I'm also gonna have to drop this as well to be able to, uh, knock him back at the same time. The thing is with the road spike, the pre-game prep at the back, I'm actually allowed one lead leeway, so it's a little bit easier than pulling this off in chimps. Okay, I have tried so much already. Now? No. Okay. Again? Uh, this is good. Wait, did it get all? I'm only missing one, but that's perfect. Got it. Good shit. So we'll just drop one road spike here. And that should be enough for that one remaining lead. The level of precision here is definitely quite something. And this wasn't even perfect. But that I'll do. But again, guys, this does not mean it's a free win for the rest of the game, because uh, due to Geraldo's nerfs, 
I don't know if 100 rounds is still possible, but it, it is, once again, with monkey knowledge, full monkey knowledge. Which does lead me to believe that there is a chance. And now, great news, we can afford Jerry's hot sauce, so uh, don't mind if I just do. I'm holding out hope in case it is actually possible to drop down Gibraltar's NFT, and I think it actually is. We're starting to catch up money-wise. I think I can actually afford it on round 45, yes. Perfect. Although, frankly, I don't think it matters because you can only spend so much money on Gibraltar. This guarantees we'll have everything we need. In fact, I also won't spend money on leveling Gibraltar so that I can precisely time when I want the shot refresh to be. That is very important for Gibraltar. The only downside to this strategy, unfortunately, is that it does end up delaying when I get the upgraded parts of Gibraltar, meaning I do get less upgraded shooty turrets, possibly less upgraded sharpening stones, but I think it's worth the sacrifice. Come on, Bunny Paragon, take us all the way to victory. Okay, bad news. It seems like I can't manipulate the timing of the level 20 draw, though. Even without spending money on it, it'll have to be from round 90 to 91, so... Uh, gonna have to try to beat some round of the late 90s with, well... Only the turrets and the rabbit and no genies. I do have the refresh now, so let's quickly drop four new turrets. Bunch of turrets and bunch of Jerry farms. I mean, so far the damage is certainly adding up. We are currently easily beating uh, all these rounds without any genies. This round, we'll refresh the camo for the DDTs. Uh, and if we're strong against these, we should definitely... Uh, first off, use all these. Uh, and glue. That was close. Ideally, I don't want to drop a genie already for this round. So what I'll do is I'll pickle so that the Jerry Fire is stronger and more, po more potent. And of course, also make sure to glue so that DTs get a little slower. I think Esmail also does camo damage now, but they did nerf the duration, so I don't know how well that does. We'll drop one totem, and that actually is so close to working. I think with just a little bit more optimization as possible. Alright, here's what we'll do. Let's glue now, and then let's wait for as many DTs as possible before using the Maelstrom. I guess in the center, like here's better. Here's much better. Use all three now. Come on. Drop glue over here. And, uh, yeah, there's only, like, five DTs left, but they're full speed, and I don't have glue. If only I didn't use glue on, uh, 93. This really sucks. It's so close to working, though. Okay, let me try the follow-way. One glue here, and then I'll do another glue, uh, why not? Sure, up here. And then, one Maelstrom now. Another Maelstrom now. And, uh, please... Come on. There's only two left. One left. This is the best so far. Yes. That's huge because now I, ha I have at least one genie for 96. One genie for the uh, end of the game. And I guess if the balloon's not DDT is, what am I to worry about? We are shredding through. Shredding through 96 without a sweat. And this means 97 will also be a breeze. 98? I might as well just drop a genie right now. It's a shame I still have jar pickles, but I need it for 95. Because right now my genie is uh, doing a little bit re reduced damage because of that that jar pickle. Not a problem though, because that extra 50,000 damage is going to help immensely. And that'll be an easy 98. Two genies now for 99. Which should also be easy. No need for any glue. And there it is. One tower and poppable done with Geraldo. And that means we would have been in every single game mode. Except for chimps with a unique tower. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think I'd get this far. And now for Chimps mode, which I hate to break it to you, but if you thought it was beatable with normal starting cash, then unfortunately that is not the case. The only way this is currently doable is in One Tower Co-op Chimps, where a month ago I already did a run with this on Corvus, and it was very, very, very painful. Check it out in full if you wish. I will just show you the ending of the run and tell you that it is indeed possible if you up the starting cash. So if we count that, then this is the final list. To answer the question, yes. You can beat every game mode with one tower. No bar we're selling, and we were oh so close to uh, having a unique completion for every single game mode, but we fell just one game mode short. Hope you enjoyed, because overall, all of these runs combined took a very long time to finish. Once again, click here if you want to see the full one tower co-op chimps run. If not, I'll see you next time.